Hey everyone, welcome back to another Battlefront 2 video. Today we have a change from my usual blaster guide videos. Instead of me making a script and doing a voiceover, I did the guide during a live stream without a script, for a more natural feel. Now this is the first guide I've done like this, so let me know what you think of it. I already know in what areas I can improve on it, but I want to see what you all think of it. Before we get into the video, remember I have timestamps in the description so you can find your way through this video easier. I'll see you guys at the end of the video, and I hope you all enjoy it. So, what it is, is I'll be going over all of its weapon attachments and everything you need to know about it. So, the EL-16 HFE, first thing I'm going to say is we're going to call it the El Jefe. See, E-L-H-F-E. We're just going to call it that because it's a pain in the butt to call it the EL-16 HFE. Okay, please. So, I'm going to get my notes out because I have a couple little points that I want to take on. But the rest of it will be uh, just live commentary as we go on. So, this blaster overall is definitely, out of the four assault class blasters, this one is the best for longer ranges, which is kind of good for Jakku. I mean, you know, sometimes it's closer quarters, so I'll try to keep my distance. So right now, um, right now, we have, this blaster has, uh, let's see, it's got high cooling power so that you can fire a lot of shots off, high damage because it's more of a distance thing, and then really it goes along with the lower rate of fire. So, you know, it has to go that way. If you have a low rate of fire and low damage, then you're going to have nothing. So you got to have that high damage output. So mainly, this blaster is for long range. So I can take it in close quarters because I have to right now. It can still do it. You can see it's slight, uh, slower rate of fire than most other assault blasters in the game. Because most of the assault blasters are made for closer quarters. This thing can... If you're really good at it, you can take on enemy specialists, like, no problem. I wouldn't go, uh, super far range with it, though. Like, I would stick to medium, uh, like, oh. Alright, I would stick, stick to about medium range, maybe a little bit farther than that, but I wouldn't stick too far. I wouldn't put that much, um, trust into this blaster, if you know what I mean, for the distances if you're fighting against enemy specialists. So now, we're going to go over the three different attachments that can be unlocked for this blaster. The first attachment, which is the easiest one, is the reduced recoil. I'll probably put up a text or something saying how many kills it takes to unlock it. Uh, so, reduced recoil. So, like I said before, it is a long-range blaster. And when... It's not... It's not like a one-shot kill like the actual... Like, actual snipers, such as the NC-242. So what you're gonna want to do? Excuse the bad gameplay right now. He's got he had the uh, he had the high ground. <laughs> uh, what was I saying? So you can have high recoil for the NC242 because it's got a one shot kill. But this thing is a good three to four shot kill. So you're gonna need less recoil so you can continue to land your shots. So that's what this recoil mod comes in handy of. It's it's very good. That's what I use most of the time. Let me see if I can get these guys first. Oh, here's a specialist. See, I most of the time I'm just hip firing. I'm not even aiming down sight if you guys notice this. I need this guy to peek out and then I can shoot him, but I can't see him now. Where is he? So yeah, it really just makes the blaster more controllable. Alright, the dude's running specialist and he's running the E4 scrambler. There we go, got him. Uh, and I'm getting shot in the back. Alright, and the second recoil is the improved range mod. So, what the improved range mod does is... It makes... So, as... Over time, as you shoot a blaster bolt off... Uh, it lowers the amount of damage that the blaster bolt does. So, over here, it might do 30 damage, but if I shoot the same thing and I hit the guy all the way in the distance, it's not going to do that same 30 damage, because that would be... It, you know, it's not as balanced. So... What the improved range mod does is it makes it last longer. The dis as the shot goes in the distance, the uh, the blaster's bolt it does almost almost the same amount of damage. Oh my gosh, we're getting sniped across the map here. So yeah, it tries to maintain it as well as possible. I don't think it would completely maintain it all the way until it hits the end. 
target. Like, if I'm shooting these guys down there, I'm... Oh, wow, they got ATSCs on us. I'm almost for sure it won't do the same amount of damage. So, it's pretty good mod if it's, if you like it sniping like that. Uh, along with the other mods, of course. And the final mod that you can unlock for the EL-16 HFE, or the el -Hefe, is the dual zoom mod. Now, you guys probably will recognize this on most uh, sniper rifles in the game. This is one of the, I think... I know this blaster and... Oh, wait, there's an ATSD? Um, this blaster and the A280, which is actually another assault rifle, that actually has the dual zoom on it. So, it's... How you activate it is when you zoom in, you press the right stick click on your controller, and it increases the zoom. Of course, it's toggleable, so you can keep it zoomed in for as long as you want, or vice versa. This mostly is for a uh, longer range. I mean, I just prefer to have it on just in case if I need to land that one shot at the distance that I can't hit it normally. So I, I personally like having options, and that's the option I would. Oh boy. Oh man, you know I should have used the Vanguard there, but you know what can you do? So. Yeah, so it's mostly preference, of course. If you don't like having the dual zoom, it's up to you. I mean, if you're gonna stay close to quarters, I mean, the thing is, most of them are meant for longer range. So even if you do uh, equip the improved range mod and don't put on the dual zoom, it's really not gonna affect it anymore because it's closer quarters. It doesn't increase the damage at close quarters. It only increases it at distances or stabilizes it. So now, um. Out of all the mods, the mods that I use the most, like these are kind of my favorite, I use the first two, or no, the first and the last one, the reduced recoil, because it's just a lot better it, without having to deal with the extra recoil, and then the dual zoom on. Like I said before, I just like having options, and that's an option I like to have most of the time. Like look how nice this is, having it all zoomed in. Right now I can't hit the side of a barn because this guy's rolling a lot and we're quite close quarters for this blaster. But, that, those are the two I'd like. Up to you, you should definitely consider trying them both and then deciding off of that. So, you have to mix and match, test your stuff. If you think, if you're going to stay closer quarters with, uh, with this blaster, which I would highly not suggest. Oh boy, that guy just melee'd me. Uh, then, you might not want to have the dual zoom. So, you know what I mean. So... One thing you're going to need to learn with the EL-16 HFE, which kind of attributes to once you're staying at distances and stuff, and because it's a black sniper, is the thing with snipers, real snipers from the specialist class, is that their bullet velocity, I think that's the word, but their bullet speed, or blaster bolt speed, is extremely, extremely fast. But this blaster bolt is not the fastest, so what you're going to have to do instead is lead your targets. So if a person's moving left and right, or really far left, or really far right, and they're in the distance, you're gonna have to contribute to that and move ahead of, and aim ahead of them. So by the time the aim actually goes, oh boy, they got a, oh, that's explosive shot there. So by the time it actually goes over and hits the enemy, like makes it over there, you'll actually be able to hit the enemy. That's one thing that comes with time and practice. It's, you know, you can't get it off start. Maybe you can. Maybe you're a good sniper and that's one thing. But it mostly just takes time and practice uh, to learn how to use the, like, how to adjust to the different uh, situations that you'll come against with the extra recoil. Here's a good, not the extra recoil, with the how slow it is. So I'm using dual zoom right now. Uh... Oh, I just got a double kill, so we're going to see if we can get some people here. Oh, wow. Okay, that was pretty good. What is... Life 11 D. Wow, okay. So that's not even... See, sometimes with the dual zoom also, it gives you a better chance to actually headshot the enemies because it's like, you know, it makes the enemies bigger. Hey, guys. I hope you all enjoyed the video. I have a topic and thing I want to correct from what I said earlier. I want to cover it right now before I end the video. In the live recording of this guide, I make it seem like the El Jefe should never go in close quarter combat. And let me correct myself, 
don't bring this blaster into close quarter combat if you don't have to. If you can stay more on the defensive playstyle for an assault class, please do. But if you have to go close quarters and you have the EL-16 HFE equipped, you'll have a harder time staying alive compared to if you had the CR-2 or the A-280. One advantage you do get from using the El-Hefe at CQC is that if you hit your enemy, you could potentially two-shot any enemy. The El Jefe has really high damage per shot at CQC. You're going to want to not spam fire as you normally would the CR2, but instead take your time and make sure you land your shots. Overall, the EL16 HFE is a really good blaster that excels at medium range combat and can be used effectively at any range, whether that be CQC or sniping distance. If you don't use this blaster, I definitely suggest you take another shot at it. If you guys enjoyed the video or learned something new, feel free to drop a like on the video as it helps out a bunch. And if you're new, make sure to check out my other blaster guides on my channel and please consider subscribing. I'm Infinite Potatoes and I'll see you on the battlefront.